When Patrick Pearce stepped out onto the foreground of the GPO on the 24th of April 1916 to read the proclamation, he began not merely by addressing Irish men, but also and equally he addressed Irish women. Our proclamation is groundbreaking among founding vision statements in that it acknowledges and addresses women, and in so doing, their acknowledges their contribution to the realization of the nation's independence in every sphere of life. Donna Cooney, a member of the executive of the Relatives Association, will now read the proclamation for us. And the flag, as you will notice, is lowered above us. <clears throat> Irish men and Irish women, in the name of God and of the dead generations from which she receives her old tradition of nationhood, Ireland, through us, summons her children to her flag and strikes for her freedom. Having organised and trained her manhood through a secret revolutionary organisation, the Irish Republican Brotherhood, and through open military organisations, the Irish Volunteers and the Irish Citizen Army, having patiently perfected her discipline, having resolutely waited for the right moment to reveal itself, she now seizes that moment and supported by her exiled children in America and by gallant allies in Europe, but relying in the first on her own strength, she strikes in full confidence of victory. We declare the right of the people of Ireland to the ownership of Ireland and to the unfeathered control of Irish destinies to be sovereign and indefeasible. The long usurpation of that right by a foreign people and government has not extinguished that right nor can it ever be extinguished except by the destruction of the Irish people. In every generation, the Irish people have asserted that right to their national freedom and sovereignty. Six times during the past 300 years, they have asserted it in arms, standing on that fundamental right and again asserting it in arms in the face of the world. We hereby proclaim the Irish Republic as a sovereign independent state and we pledge our lives and the lives of our comrades in arms to the cause of its freedom, of its welfare, of its exaltation among the nations. The Irish Republic is entitled to and hereby claims the allegiance of every Irish man and Irish woman. The Republic guarantees religious and civil liberties, equal rights and equal opportunities to all its citizens and declares its resolute to pursue the happiness and the prosperity of the whole nation and of all its parts, cherishing all of the children of the nation equally and oblivious to the differences carefully fostered by an alien government which have divided a minority from a majority in the past. Until our arms have brought the opportune moment for the establishment of a permanent national government, representative of the whole people of Ireland and elected by the suffragists of all her men and women, the provisional government hereby constituted will administer the civil military affairs of the Republic in trust for the people. We place the cause of the Irish Republic under the protection most high God, whose blessing we evoke upon our arms. And we pray that no one who serves that cause will dishonor it by cowardice, inhumanity or rapine. In this supreme hour, the Irish nation must by its valour and discipline, and by the readiness of its children to sacrifice themselves for the common good, prove itself worthy of that august destiny of which it is called. Signed on behalf of the Provisional Government, Thomas J. Clark, Sean McDermott, P. H. Pierce, James Connolly, Thomas McDonough, Eamon Kiant, Joseph Plunkett.